it's Mo back in Matthew's friend's keto kitchen and guess what? It's almost Christmas time. Now, uh, some of you may be aware that our Emma is a Christmas fan. And not only that, she's a great fan of cake. So I've come up with a new recipe and uh, it's for a family sized Christmas cake. And hopefully Emma may enjoy it. I'll just show you what's in it and that is uh, all the basics, which is butter, eggs, sweetener. Now, it, it has to be a granulated sweetener. I'm using Truvia. There's several out there, and I know you all have your favorites, but uh, we're favoring Truvia on this one. And we've got ground almonds, coconut powder, and some psyllium husk. Now, we've talked about that before, um, it's very good at uh, replacing the gluten and helps to hold the cake together. You'll see other ingredients and I'll just speak about them as I put them in. Now I'm going to start with the butter. Now that's uh, 180 grams. The recipe will of course appear on the uh, keto recipe channel. So you'll be able to do it. This is very basic, just like a normal cake. That's the granulated sweetener going in. You can do this with a food mixer, but uh, as we're filming, food mixers are a noisy item and this butter is nice and soft, so I'll get along with it quite well. You can see it's nice and soft. Now this the granulated sweeteners, you, you replace the same amount as you would use normal sugar, which is good because it gives the recipe a bit of bulk. You can see that that's, you can imagine if I used a food mixer, that would have only taken a second or two, but that's fine. Now here we have eggs. There's 300 grams of eggs there and I'm just going to give them a, a bit of a mix up. 300 grams of eggs is usually six medium size eggs so that uh, makes it nice and easy. I'm going to put it all in in one. get another spatula to make sure I get all the egg out. I might use that again in a moment. And just work that in. And when it's started to go in, you can add your dry ingredients. And I'll uh, point out one or two things. So we do get lots of questions about uh, psyllium husks and coconut powder and various things. So there's a couple of things I, I can tell you today. In here is ground almonds, but it's almond flurry. Now this is a product that we found and it's finer than normal ground almonds. You can use normal ground almonds if you can't find this. This just gives a slightly finer, lighter texture. And we get that from Holland and Barrett. Now this is coconut flour, not coconut powder. And as you can see, it's very, very fine. Exactly like a flour. And I'd just like to point out that it's, it's made by a company called Tiana. Now it is higher in carb than coconut powder. It's 21.4, I believe it is, as opposed to 6.4. I'd also like to point out that they make another product, and I know there's been one or two people out there that have made this mistake. And they've had this packet, which I'm sure you will agree, looks pretty much the same but it's not, it's totally different. This product is made from a root and the root is cassava. 
and all that does is it makes a gluten-free flour and it's very very high in carb 84 grams so don't make that mistake this is not the same as this one so it's definitely the coconut one you need not the cassava so I'm putting that in there with the almond now we have the psyllium husk now this acts almost like gluten it helps to bind it together and can you see that that is a grain that's just the husk that's been ground up now this isn't to be confused with the psyllium powder the powder looks like that doesn't mean you can't use it you can it does the same it still acts like um, gluten but we found that generally if it's ground to look like that your product your cake your biscuit whatever you're making will be purple and uh, you know that might be all right on purple day but uh, I, I think in your Christmas cake or your Easter biscuits or whatever you're making you don't really want it purple so avoid the powder and just go for the husk Now all that's going to go in and I'm just going to sprinkle it in all out. In the husk I'm adding a teaspoonful of mixed spice, a teaspoonful of Barcat baking powder, And that can all go in as well. Of course at home you can just mix all that together to start with you know and have it all together but for the purposes of showing you what's going in I've kept it separate. And then just have a, a good mix. Now we come to the fruit part. Now obviously Christmas cake has lots of fruit in it. We can't do that on the ketogenic diet, but I've used as much as I possibly can. And it's sultanas, raisins, and I've used some tinned prunes. And the tinned prunes have to be in juice, not syrup. Um, you can use cranberries and other dried fruits. Just make sure that uh, you've got the, the right quantity and the right ratio but you can you can mix it up a bit cranberries are nice at Christmas time chop up the raisins and sultanas because they'll make it look like more and it'll distribute better through the mixture and that is what it looks like after it's chopped and I actually soaked it in 30 mils of the juice from the prunes you can use water but the juice from the prunes is nice and it really plumps up the fruit again if you're making a proper Christmas cake you probably use alcohol unfortunately we can't do that but this is good so you can see that's nice plump fruit and just to add a little bit more taste of Christmas that is just one gram of orange zest and I, I've done it on a very very fine uh, grater and that will just add a little bit more flavour to it. Mix that in with the fruit so that it uh, is even. Now I expect you're thinking well that's not much fruit for a Christmas cake and no it's not but uh, it's better than not having any at all and when we first started doing uh, recipes for the keto diet this sort of thing just didn't happen so we're really thrilled that we can do it now give that a nice mix through 
You can see why that's been standing. Uh, the mixture has thickened up um, a fair amount and that's the, uh, the coconut flour and the psyllium husk doing its job. It's absorbing all the, the liquid and also helps to absorb the fat and hopefully after it's baked you'll get a nice even cake. Great, so that's fine. You can leave that to one side. Now I cooked this amount in a seven inch tin. That's up to you. You can do an eight inch one, have it narrower or six inch and have it deeper. Uh, just allow for that in the cooking. I've cut a, a piece of baking parchment already. And although this is a non-stick tin, I uh, don't trust anything. I'm going to give it just a little bit of grease and I've got spray coconut oil. What could be better? So all you do very good spray on these. I've had them in the past that have been a bit hit and miss but these are very good. So in with the paper. Again because it's non-stick you don't really need the paper but I'm a belts and braces person yeah, I like to make sure. So just give that a bit of a spray as well. And then you just put your mixture in. And once it's in the mixture, that little bit of fruit, once it's mixed in, it uh, doesn't look too bad. But chopping it up, I would say is a must really. Uh, if you leave the sultanas whole, um, you, you won't get very much going through the cake. And it helps to spread the flavour through as well. Get that evened out. Now that is going to go into an oven of uh, 170 degrees and it will take about 40 to 45 minutes to cook. If you just try it after the 40 minutes uh, with a skewer it may need another five minutes. So there it is, ready to go in the oven. And I'll show you the end result when it comes out. Right, so uh, there it is. This one took 45 minutes to cook. Uh, it's a lovely colour, as you can see and it's got a lovely flat top, which is nice. Wouldn't matter if it didn't have a flat top, but uh, it's nice when it is. Now, as this is for a Christmas cake, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, rough icing on the top. And for that, I'm going to use Sucrin today, which is uh, a stevia sweetener. The same as Natvia, that's stevia as well. Um, Natvia was the first icing that I found. Since then, this one has come along. There's not much to choose between them. Some people say they can detect a difference in the taste. So it's a matter of trying it and find out which one you like the best. But they're brilliant for making some icing. I've already mixed it. And that's 100 grams of the icing. And you just uh, keep adding water until you get the consistency you want, which is about like that. Of course, if you go too far, just put a bit more in because this is a free food, uh, so it doesn't matter if you add a bit more. And because of the flavour um, at Christmas time, and also to, to help with the flavour of the actual sweetener itself, 
I've used a few drops of orange extract. You don't have to do that, but it's nice if you do. Or you can use lemon or whatever flavour you want, but I find that orange is nice and Christmassy. Now I'm going to do it very, very simply. The old rough icing that uh, we're all familiar with. I um, don't know about you, but my mother used to do it and I did it. And it's just a matter of getting it on. I mean, you could pile this on thicker than I'm going to, but because this is a very, very sweet product, just make it enough rather than too much. Uh, and this cake, it's not just for Christmas. It'd make a brilliant uh, birthday cake for someone that favours a fruit cake rather than the spongy ones. Um, Easter cake, any cake. And who knows, even a wedding cake for keto. How about that? Now that's pretty well evenly over. And then I'm going to do what my mum used to do to make it look like buffed up snow and just get a fork and do anything you like. Ski tracks, That's hopefully like snow. to come over and see what you've been up to. That looks interesting. Cake. Obviously, that always gets my interest. Hang on a minute. Christmas cake. Christmas cake. Uh, the best we could come up with for a keto Christmas cake. The, a ketogenic Christmas cake. Uh, Iced and everything. Yeah. That yeah. looks amazing. Well, the proof of the pudding is... In the eating. I can try now. And I? as you're the cake expert. <laughs> I don't know about the cake expert, but it's only one of my favorite foods. So that's really nice. You've got fruit in there. Yes. What fruit have you put in there? Sultanas, raisins and prunes. You could of course use cranberries and... That is amazing. Wow. Mo, you are a genius. Does it taste remotely like Christmas cake? Yes, it does. And actually for somebody who doesn't like a heavy fruit cake, mm. That's really nice. That's really good. Mm. Seriously, this is worth making. You are, I know I keep saying it, but you are a genius with what you've come up with. <laughs> and that's amazing. I know you kept this as a surprise for me. I'm not surprised. Anyway, I'm gonna continue with my cake and just like to wish everybody a happy Christmas from Matthew's friends. And we'll see you in 2017. Yes. Bye. Bye.